And secondly, be aware of the counsel you seek. Ahab agrees to seek counsel, counsel from the Lord. But then he brings together his prophets, 400 prophets of Baal, to the thrashing floor. And he asked them, should we go to war against Ramoth Gilead or not? And in unison they say, go, for God will give it into the king's hand. And Jehoshaphat's observing, he's listening, and he turns to Ahab and he says, wait a minute. Is, is there no longer a prophet of the Lord in Israel? Is there anyone that you know of that we could inquire of? And to me, this is the astonishing thing. And this is why I say, beware of the counsel you seek. Because Ahab knows who speaks for the Lord. He knows the prophet of the Lord by name. And he says to Jehoshaphat, yeah, there's still a prophet of the Lord whom we can inquire of, but I hate him. He never says anything good about me. Always bad. He's Micaiah, son of Imlah. He knows him by name. The prophet of the Lord. But Ahab doesn't want the counsel of the Lord. And the question for us is, in our spiritual dullness, in our desire to have life on our terms, in our desire to please others, in our desire to fast track to success, do we want the counsel of the Lord? Observe in the text, the Lord's counsel is not established by numbers. Ahab has 400 men saying the same thing. Yeah, go. God's going to give this battle into your hands. But just because everybody says this is what's going to happen doesn't mean that they are all hearing from God. It's not established by numbers. The Lord's counsel is not established by the, the dramatic, by the fantastic, by the charismatic, by the show. You can go where the big show is. That doesn't mean you're going to have the counsel of God. With the royal parties waiting for the arrival of Micaiah, Ahab's prophets continue to forecast victory for Israel. One of the prophets, Zedekiah, even dramatizes Ahab's success with iron horns that he has made and proclaims, Ahab will gore the Armenians with this, these horns until they're destroyed. Wow, what a show. Everybody. Encore! The Lord's counsel is not established by the dramatic. The Lord's counsel is not established by agreement either. Uh, messenger goes and gets Micaiah. Micaiah arrives on the scene, and before he goes to the thrashing floor, he's taken aside. And the messenger says to Micaiah, Now look, you get to the thrashing floor, the king is going to ask you, we're going to go to fight against the Armenians at Ramoth Gilead. What do you say? I want you to know before you say anything that everybody else, 400 prophets have already spoken and we're all in agreement the king's going to win. So what are you going to say? And Micaiah says, as surely as the Lord lives, I can speak only what God says. And so when he arrives on the thrashing floor and Ahab turns to him and says, Micaiah, shall we go to war against Ramoth Gilead or shall I not? And Micaiah says, King, attack and be victorious, for they will be given into your hand. Underline this next verse, verse 15 of 2 Chronicles 18. The king said to Micaiah, and it almost sounds like your mother, how many times must I make you swear to tell me nothing but the truth in the name of the Lord? Doesn't that sound like mom or dad? Yeah. This is interesting. 
King Ahab knows when the Lord is speaking and when the Lord is not speaking. And he knew when Micaiah said, go, fight, you'll be victorious. He knew he wasn't speaking for the Lord. <laughs> How many times do I have to tell you that you, when you speak to me, you tell me the truth in the name of the Lord? Well, why don't you say that to the other 400 prophets? <laughs> the Lord's counsel is not established by agreement. The Lord's counsel is established by the one, and it's often one, who speaks the word of God directed by the spirit of God because he's been in the presence and company of God. The king says to him, tell me the word. And Micaiah answers, I saw all Israel scattered on the hills like sheep without a shepherd. And the Lord said, these people have no master. Let each one go home in peace. <laughs> and Ahab's like, I told you you didn't have anything good to say. And then he goes on to tell how he saw the Lord sitting on his throne in heaven and multitudes of heaven standing on his right and his left. And the Lord says, who will entice Ahab of Israel into attacking Ramoth Gilead and going to his death? And one suggests this and others suggest this. They're having like a brainstorming session on how to entice Ahab to go to war. And one of them says, hey, I've got it. I'll go. What are you going to do? I'll put a deceiving spirit in each of the mouths of the Ahab's prophets, and they will tell him to go to war. And the Lord says, okay, you do it. And so he goes. Ahab was not interested in knowing God's word. He was interested in having God's person agree with his plans. He was interested in having prophets who would trumpet his own opinions and his pleasures. Now, Jehoshaphat sought God's counsel. Jehoshaphat wisely and rightly said, we should probably seek the Lord's counsel on this. But observe, Jehoshaphat did not heed God's counsel. He went to war. Sadly, one of the things that grieves me as a pastor is that many Christians do not seek counsel from their pastors or godly people because they don't want to hear God's word. They want a word from God that is shaped to agree with their lifestyle or affirm their choices. They really don't want counsel from God. I've had a young couple in my office say, you know, the Bible's kind of antiquated. It's really okay for us to do what we want to do here because God's word need, isn't really in step with the times. I kid you, quote, for real, that's, that was the conversation. And I said, so why are you here? <laughs> because we want you to marry us. <laughs> you know, oh, okay. You want me to agree with you when God doesn't agree with you. <laughs> 